imagine this. Your solar panels, they're built tough, right? Yeah. <laughs> Meant to last maybe 25 years, a whole quarter century churning out clean energy. But what if the uh, the single most critical piece of kit, the real heart of that system, the part nobody really talks about, what if that fails in just five years? Suddenly all that clean energy potential, gone, poof. And it happens more often than you might think. We're talking about the inverter. It's often overlooked, but it controls literally every watt your solar panels produce. And yet, um, it's either the most fragile part, the one most likely to fail. A lot of homeowners, you know, they just go with whatever their installer suggests without really digging into why it matters so, so much. Welcome to Solar Scoop. This is where we give you the insights you need to make really smart solar decisions. Today, we're doing a deep dive. Solar inverter secrets. Avoid common mistakes. Look, our goal isn't to drown you in technical manuals. We want to give you a simple, actionable playbook how to dodge the three biggest, most common inverter pitfalls, and how you can choose the absolute perfect one for your specific needs, your home, your goals. Yeah, we're going to unpack these key mistakes. First off, just mismatching the technology, getting the wrong type of inverter for your actual roof and what you want to achieve. Second, falling for this whole myth about clipping when you're sizing the inverter. It's a big one. And finally, something folks really think about until it's too late. The physical installation details and uh, digging into that warranty fine print. Exactly. This is all about getting the most out of your system, making sure it lasts, and ultimately maximizing those energy savings for years, decades even. Okay, let's get into it. All right, mistake number one. This fundamental mismatch between the inverter tech you choose and, well, the reality of your roof, your shading, everything. This is where that big debate always seems to start. String inverters versus, what's the other category? Panel-level electronics. Right, Module Level Power Electronics, or MLPE. But first, let's talk string inverters, because what's fascinating here, honestly, is how much they've improved. Modern string inverters are beasts. Think about top brands like SMA, SunGrow. Yeah. These aren't your grandpa's string inverters. They're powerful, efficient, and they have this key feature, multiple MPPTs. MPPTs. Yeah. Maximum Power Point Trackers. Exactly. Think of them like um, smart zones for your roof. Each MPPT independently optimizes a section of panels connected to it. So say you have panels on an east-facing roof section for morning sun and another section on a west-facing roof for the afternoon. A single modern string inverter with multiple MPPTs can handle both of those perfectly, optimizing each one separately. It's pretty clever. And, you know, the panels themselves have gotten smarter, too. They have things like bypass diodes, half-cut cells built right in. Okay, what do those do? Basically, they create little detours for the electricity inside the panel. So if one small part gets shaded, say by a leaf or a vent pipe shadow for a bit, mm -hmm. the entire panel doesn't just shut down. It makes the whole string much more resilient to minor passing shade than older systems used to be. Okay, so for a home with, let's say, simple roof planes, not a lot of complex angles, minimal trees or obstructions, mm -hmm. it sounds like a well-designed string system could actually be the most cost-effective and uh, reliable choice for that homeowner. Often, yes, absolutely. But, and this is the crucial but, if you have more complex roof geometry, multiple angles, dormers, or even just one consistent source of shade, like a chimney or maybe a neighbor's tree that casts a moving shadow across your panels during key parts of the day. Right, like a slow-moving shadow that hits several panels in sequence. Exactly. That's when we really need to talk about MLPE, module-level power electronics. And that category includes two main types. Microinverters, Enphase is the big name there, and DC optimizers, which SolarEdge really pioneered. And their main advantage is... Their core benefit is simple. Shade on one panel does not affect the output of any other panel in the system. Each panel basically performs on its own. Okay, this brings up something I see constantly in online forums. Mm -hmm. You know, people asking, why does every single salesperson seem to push microinverters? Is it just the shade performance? That's a really good question, and it's, uh, it's nuanced. Yes, the performance on tricky roofs with shade is a genuine benefit, no question. But another huge factor, especially here in the U.S., is compliance with electrical codes, specifically the rapid shutdown safety requirements. Oh, uh, safety rules. Right. Microinverters and optimizers make meeting those rapid shutdown rules much simpler for installers. So that's driven a lot of their popularity stateside, maybe more so than in other parts of the world. So convenience for the installer plays a role, too. It definitely does. But the key takeaway for you, the homeowner, is this. Just because they're popular or simplify one aspect doesn't automatically make them the best choice for every roof. 
A good, honest installer will look at your specific roof, your shading, your energy goals, and recommend the tech that fits, not just push one solution. Okay, super important point. Let's move on to mistake number two then. This is about getting hung up on the inverter sizing, specifically this, uh, this myth around clipping. People hear clipping and think it's bad, something to be avoided at all costs. Can you define that again quickly? Sure. Clipping is simply when, for brief periods, your solar panels are producing more DC power than the inverter is rated to convert into AC power for your home. That's it. Right. And the gut reaction is, wait, I'm losing power. That sounds terrible. Exactly. It sounds bad. But here's the fascinating part, and maybe a bit counterintuitive. A solar system that is designed so it never clips is probably an inefficiently designed system overall. Okay, hang on. How can designing to never lose peak power be inefficient? It comes back to the main goal. What are you trying to achieve with your solar system? Is it hitting the absolute maximum possible wattage for, say, 15 minutes on a perfect, cool, sunny April day? Probably not. It's about oh, the total energy generated over the whole year, right? Precisely. Your goal is maximizing total energy production kilowatt hours over 365 days, year after year. And the way we achieve that often involves strategically oversizing the solar array of the panels relative to the inverter's AC rating. We call this having a high DC to AC ratio. Oversizing the panels compared to the inverter. Yeah. So. What this does is it makes the inverter operate closer to its peak efficiency level for more hours of the day. Not just at that brief solar noon peak, for most parts of the country, that sweet spot, that ideal ratio is around 1.33. Meaning? Meaning for, say, a 10 kilowatt rated inverter, you could pair it effectively with up to maybe 13.3 kilowatts of solar panels. Right. So, okay, I get the efficiency argument for more of the day. But why intentionally design for that clipping moment? Why accept any lost power? Because of the amount of power lost during those brief clipping periods at the absolute peak is tiny compared to the extra energy you gain during all the other hours. Hmm. Think about it. Your panels only produce their maximum lab-rated power under perfect conditions, specific temperature, perfect sun angle conditions that almost never happen consistently in the real world. Okay, that makes sense. Real world versus lab conditions. Right. So... By oversizing the array, you're significantly boosting your energy harvest in the mornings, in the afternoons, on slightly cloudier days, times when the panels aren't at their absolute peak anyway. That extra production throughout the bulk of the day far outweighs the little bit that gets trimmed or clipped right at the very top of the curve for maybe an hour on perfect days. And this applies whether you have string inverters or microinverters. Yes, the principle applies across the board. It's about optimizing the system for annual energy harvest, not just instantaneous peak power. A little clipping is actually often a sign of a well-designed, efficient system. Wow, okay, that really flips the script on the whole clipping fear. Good stuff. All right, so we've tackled the technology mismatch trap and demystified the inverter sizing and clipping issue. Huge. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll expose the third common mistake. It's a silent killer for your solar investment and talk about how you can make sure your system is truly protected for the long haul. Stay with us on Solar Scoop. Short simulated pause. And we're back on Solar Scoop. We've covered why choosing the right type of inverter matters and why a little clipping isn't something to fear. Now let's dive into our final mistake, and honestly, this one might be the most uh, insidious because it often doesn't show up for years. It's the silent killer. Ignoring the physical installation details and, crucially, the warranty fine print. This one can literally cost you thousands down the road. Oh, absolutely. This is all about long-term peace of mind, isn't it? And we see the consequences when it's ignored. We actually consulted with a homeowner recently, a really tough situation. His inverter, just five years old, completely died. Only five years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And the brand. No U.S. support office. Nothing. And, to make matters worse, his original installer out of business, vanished. Oh no, that's the nightmare scenario. It really is. He thought he had a 10 year warranty, right? But when he looked into it, the fine print said he had to pay to ship this heavy 50 pound unit overseas for service. And even if they repaired it, which wasn't guaranteed, who was gonna reinstall it? He had no installer lined up. So the warranty was essentially useless in practice. Pretty much, he maybe saved, I don't know, $800, maybe $1,000 on the initial install by going with that cheaper inverter and installer combo. But now oh. he was looking at thousands of dollars for a replacement inverter, plus installation costs, plus weeks, maybe months of lost solar production while he sorted it out. Pennywise, pound foolish, truly. That is brutal. A real cautionary tale. It just hammers home that the upfront price tag isn't the whole story, not by a long shot. Yeah. So what are the practical steps? How do homeowners avoid ending up in that situation? 
Okay, based on experiences like that, we are absolutely insistent on two things, two non-negotiables to prevent this kind of headache for you. First, where the inverter is physically installed, it must be in a cool, well-ventilated location, period. Why is that so critical? Heat is the number one enemy of electronics, always. Installing an inverter in direct baking sun or in a super hot, unventilated garage, it dramatically shortens its lifespan. It just cooks the components over time, keep it cool. And the second crucial point, the warranty itself. It absolutely has to be from a stable, reputable company with easily accessible US-based support. You need someone you can actually call. And this is the kicker. The warranty document must explicitly state that it covers not just parts, but also shipping costs and a labor reimbursement for the replacement. Labor reimbursement, that's key. It's absolutely critical because getting a free replacement part doesn't help much if it costs you $500 or more to get a qualified electrician to install it. Don't just take the salesperson's word for it. Ask to see the warranty documentation. Read that section. Is parts, shipping, and labor clearly covered in writing? That's your shield. Excellent advice. Okay, let's tie this all together then. We've covered a lot of ground. Choosing the right inverter, it's clearly not just about picking a brand off a list. It's a real engineering decision, as you said, affecting performance for decades. So for you, the savvy solar buyer listening right now, what are the key actionable steps boiling down everything we've discussed? All right. Let's make this your practical playbook for inverter success. Three key steps. Step one, demand a real analysis for your home. Don't just accept the first technology proposed. Insist that the installer thoroughly assesses your specific roof layout, your actual shading patterns throughout the day and year, and your energy goals. Only then can you determine if a modern string system or an MLP solution like microinverters or optimizers is genuinely the right fit for your unique situation. Step two, design for total energy harvest, not just chasing peak power. Understand that a healthy DC to AC ratio, typically around that 1.33 mark we talked about for most places and seeing a small amount of clipping on perfect days, that's actually a sign of an efficient system. It means it's designed to maximize your annual energy production, which is what really saves you money. And step three, vet your installation partner and the product protection. Choose a high quality, reputable installer and choose an inverter brand that truly stands behind its product. That means looking for that comprehensive parts, shipping, and labor warranty. And crucially, confirming they have a responsive support team based right here in this country that you can actually reach if needed. Fantastic summary. Those three steps really clarify the process. You know, choosing the right inverter, it doesn't have to feel overwhelming. At Integrate Sun, we've guided thousands of homeowners through exactly these decisions, helping them avoid these kinds of costly mistakes and ensuring they get the absolute best performance from their solar investment. So if you're listening and you'd like some personalized guidance tailored specifically to your home, your situation, we offer free solar consultation. We can analyze your roof using satellite imagery, look at your energy usage, talk about local incentives. Just visit IntegrateSun.com. We're happy to help recommend the perfect inverter setup just for you. And maybe one final thought to leave folks with. Remember, this inverter choice you make today, it's going to profoundly impact how well your solar system works day in and day out for potentially the next 20, maybe 25 years. Don't let what seems like a small upfront saving, maybe a few hundred dollars, tempt you into a decision that could cost you thousands in lost energy production or future replacement hassles. It really, truly is the heart of your entire solar energy system. Don't neglect it. 